In the last video, following Einstein's treatment of the interaction of atoms with a thermal electromagnetic radiation, we arrived at an expression for the rate of spontaneous emission or spontaneous decay, which is the process in which in the absence of uh, a, per a perturbation, an, ex uh, an atom in the excited state can spontaneously transition to a lower energy state emitting radiation uh, or in general, a photon of energy h bar omega b a, where h bar omega b a is the energy difference between these two states. From this rate, we're able to now calculate lifetimes of uh, excited states once the electromagnetic uh, radiation has been removed. Uh, and that would be the average time it takes for an atom in an excited state to decay to a lower energy state. And for that, we're going to suppose that the number of atoms uh, in an excited state, which we'll just call n of uh, at t equals to zero, and we'll call that n zero. This is a number of atoms in excited state. We would like to know how, when this system is left uh, on its own, how this population n uh, will change as a function of time, given that uh, we have a decay rate per atom given by a. So for that, we'll let nt be the number of atoms in the excited state at some time t. Then uh, the number of atoms that decay during some time interval uh, dt, that will be dn uh, minus because we're losing uh, population in the excited state, the uh, spontaneous decay rate. So this is a uh, probability per unit time times the duration of that interval. This gives us the probability of decay times the number of atoms in the excited state at time t. Uh, bring the dt over to the other side. We end up with a first order separable differential equation for the number of atoms in the excited state at some time t. This is uh, straightforward to solve. Uh, it just comes down to a decaying exponential where at time equals to zero, we have our initial condition of n not atoms in the excited state. This is often written in terms of a characteristic time tau so that the exponent is unitless uh, for which about 60% of the atoms would have decayed to uh, a lower energy state. So this tau is what we're going to define as the lifetime. And by definition, it's equal to one over the decay of, or the spontaneous decay rate. Which is given by this expression over here, omega ba cubed over three pi epsilon naught permittivity of free space, h bar c cubed times the matrix element of the typo moment operator. So by calculating this rate of spontaneous decay, we can estimate the lifetimes of excited states uh, straightforwardly. In many cases, uh, there's more than one way for an excited state to decay, there's more than one pathway.
uh, we'll call that uh, decay pathways. Each with uh, decay rate A1, A2, etc. Then we define the total decay rate A as just being the sum of all of the decay rates of the of all the possible decay pathways accessible to that excited state. This would mean that uh, the net lifetime of that excited state tau, which is just one over the total decay rate is equal to one over the sum of the individual decay rates. So for example, if we have uh, some excited state and it can decay to uh, two possible states, not necessarily degenerate, this could be uh, different energies. This has a decay rate A1, this has a decay rate A2. Then the lifetime of this excited state would be one over A1 plus A2. Where A1 and A2 would be calculated as follows. Uh, these constants remain the same for both transitions. The resonance frequency will probably change for each one of them. And the central quantity that changes is the dipole moment uh, matrix element. This will depend on uh, the properties of each one of these states relative to the excited state. This also tells us something very important. It says that in cases where the dipole moment matrix element is zero, there is no spontaneous decay rate. What this means is that there's no, uh, that particular pathway is not accessible as a decay uh, route for the excited state. And it would be useful in general to uh, have a general rule to know when this quantity is equal to zero. And that will bring us uh, in the next video to the idea of selection rules for decay transitions, which will give us some general rules in atomic systems uh, where the, uh, the dipole moment operator will be zero in general.